later I'll show you one of these the example of this Japanese tunnel. Just one unknowing concept, a country without ruins is a country without memory. And a country without memory is a country without history. So these ruins are the memories of our history.
Welcome, welcome to Corregidor Island. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Corregidor. So my name is William, so I'll be your guide for this tour. And with us is June, so he will drive us around the island. So good morning, June. So first thing first, please remember your seats. So this would be your seats all throughout the tour. So our tour will last at 2 p.m. So later we'll be boarding the bus by 2 p.m. So before we start actually, this is our itinerary. So it's now 9.15. So in front of the, in front of the bus, so this is the map of Corregidor Island. Corregidor Island is shaped like A. And we're smiling. Maybe there's a doctor here. If you're a doctor, you have different perspective for this one. But this is a tadpole shaped island, okay? We are now here on the neck of the tadpole shaped island. Three miles across to your right side, that is Pataan Peninsula. So our first itinerary for today will be covering the head of the island. We'll be going up to the middle side section of the island, up to top side area. Top side elevation will be up to 628 feet above sea level. And then we'll be having lunch maybe around 11.30 a.m. They started fortifying this island as early as 1902. And the last construction of the Palito Tunnel, it was constructed for 10 long years from 1922 and substantially finished by 1922. So later that would be our finale. Our last stop would be the uh, part of your package is now that is available the light and sound show inside Malinta Tunnel complex. So we have a uh, you know during the American period we constructed a uh, military MP during that time. But today we started in 1990, we constructed the uh, hotel. So currently now we have 31 rooms of that and see many of the hotel. So if you want to stay overnight next time, it's possible you can uh, stay at the Corrida Hotel. You know Corrida Hotel is the best hotel here in the island. To your left side, one of the suicide clips of the Japanese. As we all recall, they had this Bushido code. It is an honor to die to the emperor rather than to surrender in shame to their enemy. Sometimes some of these Japanese soldiers, they commit a seppuku or harakiri, or sometimes most of these Japanese giant jump on these clips head on first. You know, after the uh, Philippine and American soldiers gathered an uh, estimated 4,500 dead Japanese soldiers. And then Philippine and American soldiers, the one who were the soldiers, these Japanese soldiers, somewhere here in the field section of the island. Much later we'll be going that uh, it is not cemetery anymore. It is a memorial garden. It is rather the one whose grade is 4,500. And then there's another 2,000 Japanese who committed mass suicide inside Malita Tunnel. So uh, the casualties of the Japanese during that time after the war, around 6,000 soldiers. So we'll be driving the bus slowly to Juarez, so you can take photos in the bus. But don't you worry later, on the highest point of the island, we'll be passing by the Milo Barracks. You can share your familiar with the Milo Barracks. That's the most photographed structure in the island. So we'll be staying longer later on the high street. So we'll be driving the bus slowly. So going back to this uh, building, there's a sign it's here. Middle side barracks house the 60th Coast Artillery Anti-Aircraft Registry. So meaning these are the uh, American soldiers low ranking officers stayed here. It could accommodate up to uh, 3,000 soldiers on double deck nets. You know, during the construction, can you see this twisted part they used? That was uh, coming from uh, Vietnam Steel, Person Green, AUSA, and then the labor forces were coming from us Filipinos, uh, from uh, the little prisoners in Manila. They brought them here for hard labor. And then the cement was ironically coming from Japan. It was brought from Japan. Sano cement factory. So during that time, there were only two manufacturing cement here in Asia, Japan and Australia. So uh, Japan was much cheaper, so the, the Americans bought from Japan. And then, you notice also, there are some metal supports inside it. Uh, these are uh, these barracks here. It was put up by our government 10, 15 years ago. So that was meant to prolong the life of the building. So according to the experts, 10 more years, this building will be collapsing already. So sadly, after 10 years, June and I don't have a job anymore. But uh, actually, uh, a lot of guests were asking, why do the government do something about this one? Just like rebuilding this palace here. There's one unknowing concept. 
a country without ruins is a country without memory. And a country without memory is a country without history. So this ruins are the memories of our history. Oh, well said. Again, there's, it consists of two buildings here. The first one we passed by, that is for the American soldiers. This one here to your right side, this was purposely for the 91st Constantinian Philippine Scouts enlisted men. But they were under the American uh, US Army. So same capacity, same design, it could hold up to 3,000 soldiers on the protected. As you may recall, the uh, Philippines were under the Spaniards for more than 300 years, or 333 years to be exact. After the Spaniards, the American took over, Treaty of Paris, 1898, you know, the Americans got us from Spain, 20 million US dollars during that time. And you know, when they developed Corridor, how much they spent? 115 billion dollars. So this is times six or seven, the worth of the whole Philippines, why so? As I mentioned earlier, not only this island, five islands were here at the mouth of the bay because they were strategic in location and four were developed by the Americans. Their purpose, this was meant to protect Manila against naval attack. So our capital before, actually up to now, is still Manila. So there's no airplanes invented yet during the fortification of this island. They were called the hardware defense of Manila Bay. Uh, part of the $150 million and a small island like Corinidor Island, just imagine they had uh, Olympic-sized swimming pool, they had nine old golfers, they had first-class cinema, they had a um, commissary or duty free shop, first-class hospital, first stock riding activity, uh, taxi services. You know what we are riding at now? This is a replica of the old trolley before. They called it, a, just like in San Francisco, San Francisco cable car, trolley or tram. And then they put up 23 gun batteries here in the island. So we're talking about guns. So that is Corregidor, it's all about guns, guns, and guns. So welcome now to one of the 23 gun batteries. This is now battery wave. So just give me one minute to explain, and then I'll give you time to explore, uh, to explore okay? So here in this area, Actually, there's a still original angry to the world, that's battery we. Battery, in military, ter uh, military term, that is a group of guns in one location. Sometimes you can find one, two, four, or eight guns. So as long as it is in one area, they call it a battery. We, that is a surname of an American soldier who died during the Filipino-American War. Second Lieutenant Henry We. That is the that was dated 1898. <laughs> So again, this is under 
a may 750 pound share going out of the gun. They did, they removed the brain scrap and firing pin and then they dumped it in the sea. So there's no evidence that the Japanese used this uh, during the retaking of the island, 1945. And you, you notice also there's a lot of bomb craters here in this area. You know, when the when Bataan fell to the Japanese, April 9 of 1942, the following day, April 10, all of the artillery pieces of the Japanese were concentrated bombing Corridor Island. You know, they bombed Corridor from Bataan, from Cavite by air, an average of uh, 16,000 shells of bomb here were dropped. That is per day, average, for 27 days till this island surrendered May 6 of 1942. Okay, our next stop, as I mentioned, this is now the biggest, the powerful, and the strongest gun here in the island, named Battery Burn. So in Battery Way, that is 8 miles only, that their maximum range. This one here, it could fire 17 miles or... 17 kilometers, uh, 17 miles or 27 kilometers. So for Filipinos, if you're familiar with EDSA, the whole length of Monumento to Baclaran, that is 27 kilometers. Okay. So this battery hern, actually they have two of this kind, battery smith and battery hern. So battery smith is down below to the, inside the jungle also. This is the last gun to ever install here in this island, early 1920. Sometimes we do have some guests that they can easily uh, see a ghost or not. It depends on it. But, but before that, here to your left side, this is the sample shell of this battery here. 
It weighs 1,000 pounds heavy, same caliber, just like that in a way, 12 inch caliber. Uh, next up, this is a disappearing gun here in the island. Disappearing, not literally disappear, but it disappears on the enemy side of view. So the barrel is on the carrier and it has a wall or cartilage, uh, it has a wall on the sides. You know, when it fires, it goes, the whole barrel goes up the wall to fire and then down to reload. Up again to fire and then down to reload. So it has a counterweight of 60 tons heavy, making that uh, up and down motion, just like disappearing. This is one of the, uh, actually it has two 10-inch uh, disappearing gun here in the island, these battery crops. And also, you know, um, if you have overnight gas also, this is where we bring them early afternoon for sunset viewing because this is a nice panoramic view, overlooking view of uh, Maribelis Mountain and uh, the third island here at the mouth of the bay. So this is La Boca Island. So uh, this uh, Maribelis Bataan, for foreigners especially, this is one of the two zero kilometers of the death march. Are you familiar with the death march? So these 76,000 Philippine and American soldiers, when they surrendered to the Japanese in the Taan Peninsula, uh, so one of the zero kilometers is Maribelis, which uh, we are, uh, it is visible from this area, and another zero kilometers is Simbaga. So they walk from uh, uh, this uh, mountain, Maribelis Mountain, all the way to San Fernando, Pampanga, 102 kilometers. And from San, Ber San Fernando, they board on a train uh, going to Capas Tarlac. You know, this 76,000 uh, did the death march. Uh, only uh, 51,000 made it to the camp. The rest, 25,000 were declared missing or died along the way. That's the story of the infamous death march happening in Bataan Peninsula. Okay, let's go down here, maybe 10 minutes here, 10, 15 minutes. So, you know, uh, surrounding this island, you know, anybody can enter here from 1945 up to 1953. A lot of guns, especially on the shorelines, there were guns already. Or scrappers, shooters, scavengers. Just imagine battery weight. Uh, the spare barrel of battery weight weighs 54 tons heavy. And that is a first class uh, steel. This one here, you notice. So, there were, uh, at the shoreline, there were no guns already. So, they started to scrap this. Uh, big guns here at the highest point. They started to this to cut this one here. You notice there's a marking here. So but, uh, there's no counterweight here. Supposed to be it has 60 tons of counterweight. But on the other gun, on the other side, it has a uh, 60 tons counterweight. Actually, it was the Japanese who started the scrappers here in this island during the war. They scrapped metal iron, including this railroad tracks, and then they took them in Japan.
there's a nice view here on the third level overlooking the West Philippine Sea and Maribelas Mountain from here. So that's the fifth island, Lamongha Island. Yes, sir. Ah, no, sir. Uh, Lamongha. Lamongha. Or the Nan Island. So it is too small that Americans put up signal station on it. We did not develop it. So is it the bets? No, it's not. Right. Right. <laughs> Up south. We're still here at the head of the island. So next we'll be uh, climbing again. This uh, will be going to the top side bar, so the highest point of the island. So there's no monkey show today. Yesterday is a holiday. It's holiday in So here in this island, you can find a lot of monkey wildlife. One of these is uh, we have here. We have here some wild boar, wild deer, monitor lizard. Giant sea turtle, some um, birds. We do have bird watching activity here. We have around 14 species of bird here in this island also. Most commonly you probably see uh, birds here are these uh, kingfisher bird. These are the blue with white feather and orion also, yellow and black feather. Or some uh, a lot of Philippine hawks, probably later on the ice point, we'll show a lot of uh, some of these uh, Philippine hawks. And we do have some pythons and cobras here also in the island. 
and thousands and thousands of monkeys all over the island. These are the long-tailed uh, Philippine macaque-type monkeys. So our next stop is to visit the the popular topside barracks because it is uh, located at the highest portion of the island, and they call it Nylong Barracks. So this is not one mile in length. It is only 1,520 feet. It's even a third of a mile. But the Americans call this mile long because during that time, during that construction, that is the single longest barracks constructed by the Americans at that time. That's why they called it mile long barracks. So they had almost complete amenities. They had cafeteria, contact barracks. They had cafeteria, library, chapel, bowling dancing hall, bowling alley. They even had indoor swimming pool at that mile long barracks. And it comes the 59 coastal killer of the Americans, high-ranking officers. It could accommodate up to 6,000 soldiers. So ladies and gentlemen, to your left side, this is now what's left of the Mylong Barracks. So this used to be their cafeteria area here in this portion here. December 29 of 1941, 6 a.m. in the morning, the first day of bombing here in Corregidor Island. So they bombed this cafeteria. They thought that MacArthur is having his breakfast here in that uh, here on that area because he used to have his breakfast there. And we can see this uh, orange emblem still attached to the wall at the second floor. Where is that one? Coming up to your left side here. That's the emblem of the 59 Coast Artillery who stayed here in this mile long barracks. And on the other side. This is now their parade ground. This is where they parade drill exercises during that time. So I'll tell you this uh, short story how the Americans will take the island. Okay? Nice, chill weather. Okay, before you go down, uh, you know when the Japanese, going back to the map, when the Japanese occupied this island, when they invaded this island, May 5th of 1942, what the Japanese did, they landed here at the tail section of the island. They landed here because this is the easily to uh, penetrate because this is the lowest elevation, the tail of the island. And then three years after, when the Americans came back during the liberation of the island, you know, the Japanese thought that the Americans will do the same way also. So the, America, the Japanese troops defending this tail of the island, most of their troops were here on the tail of the island. But instead, what the, Jap what the Americans did, instead of landing here, they parachuted on a narrow piece of land here at the highest point of the island. To your right side, this is the drop zone E of the 503rd Parachute Regimental Team, headed by General George Jones. Drop zone B would be the nine-hole golf course. That is very dangerous maneuver for the American. You know, they're expecting a 50% casualty because, because during that time, you know, the wind has a very high velocity, so from 1,000 feet, the airplane must go down to 400 feet. So they say, according to the veteran CPU champ, just count 1,001, 1,002, and 1,003, you already hit the ground. You don't have a chance to use your reserve chute just in case your main chute.
before American president visited this island. 1994, when former US President Bill Clinton came here in the island, and 1997, Jimmy Carter. So for uh, former President Bill Clinton, after many months of preparations here in the this island, including that helipad, after 15 minutes he left. So thank you for the helipad. <laughs> Next time, you can use a private helicopter also, so some of our VIPs coming here via helicopter. Though we do have a runway here at the tip of the tail, so now though there's start uh, before it is only end, end, the end points are the cemented roads, uh, but now they started to put up a cement, so hopefully in a, a months or year, they will be completing to put up a cemented roads. This is a 800 meter skinny field. They say if you, uh, you have to be an ace pilot to land in this uh, airfield. Because if not, at the end of this airfield, there's a civilian cemetery. So you'll just end up in civilian if you miss the runway. Okay. Here, to the left side, this is now a cine, cinerama. We call it cine corregidor. You know, uh, it has 781 seats in capacity. They film two movies every night here in this uh, cinema here. This is a first class cinema, as I mentioned, first class, because two weeks in advance, before they played in Manila, they filmed it here. And they played Hollywood film. The last movie that was shown here, that has a classic movie, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. The movie, and with a wheel. Starring Clark Black Cleaver and Vivian Lee. Double with Spider-Man 2. So this is now the whole Pacific War Memorial. So this Pacific War Memorial was developed by the Americans 1968, funded uh, 1.2 million US dollar during that time. Four American architects who designed this one together with one Filipino. Can you see these uh, two soldiers here? There's a two statue here. Uh, so this is, uh, one is a Filipino and one is an American soldier. They call it uh, Brothers in Arms or simply Filipino-American Friendship Park. It is the American who is uh, uh, helping out the Filipino wounded soldier. But don't you worry, Filipinos, in Georgia, Atlanta, in Andersonville, they had similar uh, friendship park there in the U.S., but it is on the other way around. It is the American who is wounded, helping out by the Filipino soldier. And it has a Filipina also, a uh, girl, Filipina girl. It's holding a coconut shell filled with water. That's in Georgia. Okay? We'll be going at the end of the memorial, okay? So later, June will be waiting for us here in, underneath this uh, acacia tree. Actually, this is a two tree. So since we are now here, taking advantage that we are here, this is the best view here in this island. Overlooking the tail of the island. But the best view is down below, so hold on. Are we going down, June? <laughs> so this is now the tail of the island, surrounded the bay, six provinces surrounded the bay, starting off to the left side, that is Bataan, Pampanga, Bulacan, and straight ahead, that's Manila, 26.6 nautical miles away. So on a few days, we can see the buildings from Manila from here. To the right side, that is Cavite and Batangas. So again in front is now Malinta Hill. So underneath this Malita Hill, can you see an uh, opening tunnel? That's the west entrance of Malinta Tunnel. So later, after lunch, we'll be going on the other side of this hill, entering the east entrance, and our exit will be on that tunnel there, west entrance. But before that, we'll be going to the Japanese Memorial Garden that used to be a cemetery. After this uh, hill, to the right side of the cliff, you can see a white beacon standing. That is the Buddha of the Japanese Memorial Garden. So we'll be going there later, after lunch. Again, corridor is situated at the mouth of Manila Bay. So we're still here at the mouth of Manila Bay.
done please so again next we'll be visiting the lighthouse old spanish lighthouse so this lighthouse is one of the oldest structure here in this island it was built during the spanish period uh, on the year 1836 the first lighthouse and then they built a much bigger lighthouse 1856 and then it was destroyed during the war so it is it, it was actually we got started already at the lighthouse, but there is still some original accounts and the names of the first level of the first countries. But before that, here to your left side in front, this is their bachelor officer's quarters building. And at the second floor, it has a very unique chapel. It has a chapel. It has a rotatable altar to cater the three religions here in Corregidor Island. Jewish, Protestant, and Catholic, so they just took the altar the other way around. And in fact, you can see those two canyons, those are the uh, Spanish canyons that they, the Americans take in the Philadelphia. It was completed, uh, that, that uh, headquarters was completed in 1915, it is written in front in Roman numerals. Right? So in front, again, this is the highest elevation of the island, 628 feet above sea level. So the lighthouse is the one that uh, white building that has a red cross design. So behind this lighthouse, you can see these two big cylindrical objects. So these are still the pre-war building or water tank, as they say, because they say behind, behind these water tanks used to be the night hall golf course here in the island. So here in the lighthouse, actually you can go up to the lighthouse. But you have to negotiate 57 steps going up to the lighthouse. So I'm very sorry, there's no elevators here. But when you reach at the top, there's a nice panoramic view from the head to the tail of the island. So we'll be standing here for another 10 minutes here, 10, 15 minutes max. And then after this, we'll be right
थोड़ा उन दाउन देने का भाई दुख के सुनते कम Se va a sobrar, se va a So this is where MacArthur had this uh, flag raising ceremony when he came back here in this island, retaking this island March 2nd of 1945. When he said, I see the old flag stop still stands, have your troops hoist the colors to its peak and let no enemy ever call them up. So that's MacArthur now. So this is still original. If you look closer, there's still some bullet holes on it. Again, to the left side here, these are the senior officers' quarters. One family on the first floor, another family on the second floor. The very unique design of this uh, senior officers' quarter here in the Philippines, it has a chimney on a tropical island. They say it is a standard design of the Americans. What they had in America, so they built them here in Corregidor Island with chimney. Maybe for Santa Claus to get in every December. So coming up to your left side, this used to be their night hall golf course. Turn to your left side, but it is jungle now, of course. But many holes were added during the war. So inside the jungle also, this is, you can find this old swimming pool. It has 15 by, this is a 15 by 27 uh, meters swimming pool. Again, they use a uh, salt water for that one. So before we go down, the bottom side will be stopping here. Just one more stop before we'll be having lunch. But you don't have to go down the bus anymore. If you still remember Battle Way, that has four mortars. You know Battle Way, that is the second uh, that's the second most effective guns here in this island. The effective guns, this is battery Kiri. So this battery Kiri has eight mortars. So the Japanese kept advocating this one here. So down below to your right, right side. This is what's left of battery. So just imagine, there were four mortars on the far end and another four mortars just near us here. And at the center, about the mobile technology. Can you see that bank crater at the middle? You know, that used to hide the 40 tons of that mortar. So when the Japanese located this one here, all of their artillery pieces zeroed here on this area. Uh, they kept bombing and bombing and bombing till such time when 240 millimeter diameter of the Japanese penetrated that 80 feet of concrete sol uh, solid concrete roofing, penetrated, uh, detonated 40 tons of gunpowder. So when that was exploded, all of the guns here were thrown away like mudsticks. So every gun uh, weighs uh, 13 tons each, and the casualty here. You know, every gun, as I mentioned earlier, manned by 13 soldiers. So just do the map. They had eight mortars. So that was destroyed May 2nd of 1945. So when that was destroyed, General Jonathan Mayhew Wainwright decided to surrender 
the 45 islands here in the mouth of Manila Bay. Because anytime sooner or later, these soldiers, especially the 6,000 Filipino and American soldiers inside Palita Tunnel, anytime that the Japanese can massacre them. So, uh, uh, the first negotiation of uh, Masaharo Goma and General Greenlight was failure. Because uh, General Masaharo Goma said, okay, I know that you have been the designated commander of all your support forces all over the Philippines. So, he wanted Goma to surrender the full use of the forces. So General Wainwright came back here in uh, Corregidor Island. But the problem, May 5, 1942, when, uh, when the Japanese were started to land their tanks here at the third section of the island. So we don't have a choice but to surrender the, uh, the whole uh, use of the forces all over the Philippines unconditionally. So the surrender was happened here in Corregidor Island. But you know, before General Wainwright surrendered to the Japanese, he sent an advance message addressed to President of the United States. And this is very touching message. Actually, I would like to share it with you and help by still remember. And the message said, I quote, to the President of the United States of America, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It is with broken heart and head bowed in sadness, but not in shame. I report to Your Excellency that today I must arrange the terms of the surrender of the 45 islands of Manila Bay. There is a limit to human endurance, and that limit has long since been passed. Without any prospect of relief, I feel it is my duty to my gallant troops and to my country to end this useless effusion of blood and human sacrifices. If you will agree, Mr. President, please say to the nation that my troops and I have accomplished all that is humanly possible, and that we have upheld the best traditions of the United States and its army. May God bless you and guide you toward ultimate victory. With profound regret, but we continue fighting my gallant troops. I go now to meet the Japanese commander. Goodbye, Mr. President. Signed, Lieutenant General Jonathan Mayhew Wainwright, May 6, 1942, Korea Island. It's end of code. You know, it took me six months to memorize that thing. <laughs> so, the surrender of the whole Philippines was done in so it was done here in Perimeter Island, one of the famous old barrio here, Barrio Santos. Before I went to the so let's go back to the map here. So Perimeter Island is uh, three miles away north of this island, as I mentioned earlier, Bataan Peninsula, and far, far south of the island, eight miles away. Bataan, Cavite province. Corridor Island is under the jurisdiction of Cavite province, even if it is uh, closer to Bataan Peninsula. So, uh, it is part of the extension of the Sangli Naval Bases in Cavite. This is not outside, not in front of the bus. <laughs> so, um, Corridor's address is 53 Das Bay, Sangli Point, Cavite City. So welcome to Cavite, you're not in Bataan. So the corridor, the longest portion is 4 miles long, 1.5 miles at its widest point. Total land area of Corridor Island, 3.2 square mile island or 546 hectare. You ever wonder how Corridor got its name? Anyone? This is a Spanish word, comes from the root word Corregir which means to check or to correct. You know, during the Spanish period, all vessels entering and leaving the bay, they have to pass by here in this island to have their papers checked and corrected. So that's the word El Corregidor or Island of the Corrector. When the Americans occupied the island, they did not call this island Corregidor. You know, they called this island Fort Mills in honor of Brigadier General Samuel Mayor Mills of the U.S. Army. And then when the Japanese occupied this island, they called this island Omashima. Simply Omas Island in memory of Masaharu. But today, Corridor Island is still very popular in the name Corregidor Island. Or some Americans say Corregidor Island. Up here, again, to your left side, Malinta Hill. You know, uh, we have a uh, hiking trail here in this island. It's climbing on top of this Malinta Summit Trail. 45 to 1 hour, one hiking, this is a good one, right? Uh, but once you reach at the top, there's a 
It is dotted with Japanese tunnel at the shoreline. That is excluding another more tunnels at the highest point of the island. So later I'll show you one of this at the example of this Japanese tunnel. So here the right side is we are now here at the foot of this Malinda Hill. So there's a Japanese tunnel here to the right side coming to the right side. This one here. So just imagine they had a any placement here and to the opposite side how many are you will be. Our next stop, this is a very interesting place because uh, as I mentioned earlier, this used to be the cemetery of this 4,500 dead Japanese soldier that was dated 1945. Again, it is the Philippine and American who buried there, this Japanese soldier here. And then 1953, after eight years, you know, Terotoro Street, the island, what our government did, they did the area seedling, Puro Puro Street, the island. So this cemetery became lost, became jungle. So the Japanese government knew that there's only one existing military cemetery on the entire Pacific. But the problem, they cannot find the location where it is. It took them 50 years locating this one. So I'll show you, and I'll continue the story later when it needs to be. Japanese Memorial Garden inside. So this is a 2.2 hectares of the Japanese Memorial Garden now. But before we enter, coming up to your right side here, if you still remember, this is the Buddha, and I'm overlooking you the highest point in here. So this Buddha, they call it Jiba Kanin Sama, or this is a fertility goddess with motherly affection. We still call it Buddha Man. So this statue is facing Japan. So finding you, this is a fertility goddess. 
this is effective because for the last month, Otasi is now pregnant. <laughs> story. So, 19, uh, again, they were still, uh, kept on looking this uh, Japanese cemetery. You know, it is one American who found this area here. He took them up to 1945. When Zewitt Skinner, luckily he found a picture, which he, he bought in a garage sale in Portland, got, Portland, Oregon guided them. That picture showing there's one unknown GI standing, and then to his right, there's a signage here. It says, Japanese Military Cemetery, established 1985. And how did they ensure that it is in Corregidor Island? Because that picture on the, on the background, you can see Caballo Island from the picture. So using that as a reference, they located that it is in Corregidor Island. So through the permission of our government, all of the bones were exhumed, cremated, and then as I sent back to Japan. But for the record out of this 4,500, only 46 of human bones were gathered. And then a year after 19, uh, 1986, since they used this as a cemetery, so they requested to our government to put up a Japanese military cemetery. Though there's a lot of protests ongoing during that time, especially for the families and the veterans uh, itself who fought in, uh, in the war. But to consider that Corridor Island now is an island of valor, peace, and international understanding. So everybody is most welcome now here in this island. Uh, here in this area, you can find four anti-aircraft guns. These are made from Hiroshima. But the original locations were somewhere in the north section of the island.
So before we go to the Narita Tunnel, we'll be visiting by this uh, Filipino Pios Memorial. Of course, for the Filipinos, this is ours. So this Filipino Pios Memorial was erected for all Filipino fighting men who fought in Thai during the Second World War. Uh, last stop, and then at the least. So this is now a Malinta Tunnel complex. So what is this Malinta Tunnel is all about? So from 1922, when there's a disarmament treaty that they cannot, uh, they were not allowed to upgrade their weapons anymore. That's why you can see there's only a few anti-aircraft guns being stored here. So starting 1922, they started to build this Malinta Tunnel. So it was done by the, uh, the long-time Filipino prisoners. They don't want to take the tunnel manually. That's why it took them up to 10 long years. So from 1922 and substantially finished 1932. So before, this is only a shortcut tunnel from the bottom side where we started the tour earlier going to the field side. So the Malinta Hill is located here at the middle of the neck of the island. But when they saw it is under 350 feet of solid rock, they made it into a bamboo shelter. That's why, aside from the main tunnel we'll be passing by, they built more tunnels left and right side. These are the laterals. They, uh, they built 13 laterals on the north side and 11 laterals on the south side. Total of 24 laterals. Collapse. So right now we'll be experiencing 30 minutes light and sound show. This is a diorama with light and sound effect. So we'll be hearing some simulated voices of John Douglas MacArthur, President Quezon, and Osmeña, and the only original voice we'll be hearing is the voice of our very own Norman Reyes, a Filipino announcer. When he announces over the radio when he said, Good evening everyone everywhere, this is the voice of freedom broadcasting from somewhere in the Philippines. Bataan has fallen. In many words then, when he said somewhere in the Philippines, uh, he's here in Corregidor.
Inside this lateral, there's a thousand bed hospital. The telephone, typewriters, computers, the cabinet, those are the ones they used before. So those are the original ones. If you want to see them working, you can come back here 12 midnight tonight. <laughs> Give way, give way! I'm sorry, sir, you'll have to remain outside. Let my friend there ringing in. He... We are denying their absolute resolve for absolute conquest. They have complete control of land, sea, and air operations. And still, no help was coming. General Wayne White was summoned by General MacArthur to play in the of Badan and told... I want you to understand my position, Jonathan. I have to leave for Australia on repeated orders from the President. General Douglas MacArthur redeemed his promise to return. The island he had left more than three years before was now liberated from the enemy. So again, this Malinta Tunnel was designed as a bomb proof shelter, but if the bomb were coming from outside, but when the Japanese committed mass suicide inside Malinta Tunnel, so bombs were coming from inside. That's why a lot of laterals or the or laterals collapse. You know, out of these four main entrances, the south entrance which is on your left side, most of them collapse. So the south entrance is not accessible uh, anymore. And also the main tunnel, 
uh, after the war, you cannot see the lighting coming from the other end. It collapsed also. It was cleared out only in 1976, Philippine government already. And this one here, this is, since we are now here, uh, Barrio San Jose, this is a church now. Before they had a the church, it is a wooden church. They call this San Jose Church. And it was built here in 1990s. So, um, Every Sunday, sorry to say, we don't have a regular mass here in this island now because we don't have a regular peace. But for the record, five couples have been married here in Corregidor Island to the church there. So next time you come back, if you want to have your wedding done here in Corregidor Island, it is possible. Just arrange with Corregidor from Belgium Incorporated. The birthday got out the wedding package here in Corridor Island. If you don't have a group or bride, it's just already included in the package. It is all included. Anyone would like to build that one? We passed by the dormitory type building. That is the hostel. Aside from the hotel, you can stay overnight at the hostel. Much cheaper accommodation, but it is here on double tickets. Separate rooms for the boys and girls. It could accommodate 25 boys and 25 girls. So finally, again, we hope we enjoy, you enjoyed the tour here in Polydor Island. Uh, Hope we, uh, it is to your expectation and satisfaction. Again, on behalf of Corridor Foundation Incorporated, so my name is William here together with you, saying thank you very much for coming to the island. So just like General Douglas MacArthur, you shall return. So just like Gen uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger says, you'll be back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we hope we meet your day. Thank you and Mabuhan. Thank you, June. So let us go sailing back to uh, Manila. And please double check your things, make sure everything will be. So, finally, and again, thank you very much for having me. Hope to see you again soon.